So these are 280 amp hour cells and I'm gonna build a 16S or a 51.2 volt nominal lithium iron phosphate battery bank. But these cells came from different suppliers. On the far left, these are from Current Connected. Um, these are from Dokan Power. These ones are from Eel Battery. And at the very end, this group is from Dokan Power as well. And because they're from different suppliers, they're gonna be at a different state of charge. Some of these packs I did capacity tests, others I didn't use at all. So before we build our battery and put all of these cells into series with their own BMS, we need to charge them all up to 100%. Now I wanna show you my method of doing this quickly because doing a top balance with this many cells with a small power supply would take a very long time. Each group of four cells is at the same state of charge. So all I need to do is add a 4S or a 12 volt BMS to each group of four, charge it all the way up, and then put the BMS on this one, charge them all the way up, and then so on. And charging at 12 volts is very easy because I have high amperage 12 volt chargers, and a lot of other people do as well. Now if all these cells on the table were from current connected, I could easily put them in series without doing a top balance at all, because I know that they're already at the same state of charge. So this video is not for everyone. I do not recommend anybody doing a top balance unless you are not pulling full capacity. If you build your battery and it's pulling full capacity, you are good to go just leave it alone. Now, if you're not pulling full capacity, you need to do a solid top balance. And I have another video showing you how to do that below. So I think you guys get the idea. Let's get started and charge these batteries up. And the BMS we're gonna use is a 150 amp JBD. This will allow us to use two of these chargers on a single pack. Now, if you have grade B cells, you should do a top balance no matter what because yeah, those things are gonna be off by quite a bit. But brand new cells, completely pointless. Now B minus connects to the battery negative and this goes out to the chargers or loads. Now the BMS and the first charger are connected. We're charging at 72 amps. Now charger number two, 144 amps straight into this battery. So it is finally fully charged. It took about two hours. Now we have the first row of cells and we have a lot more to do, but I wanna use a snake configuration. And it should end up looking exactly like this, but instead of two 8S BMSs, I'm gonna use a single 16S BMS instead. But I love this configuration. The cells are not touching each other and it's simple. It's easy to organize the balance wire and it works really well. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day charging up those layer packs and then lining them up right here. So we'll be back in a second. So fast forward a week later and the final pack is finally charged. I had so much stuff going on this week. So yeah, let's finish up this project. Also, I should mention the JBD BMS 150 amp. I switched the balance leads on cell one and cell three and it did not destroy the BMS. Typically it will destroy them, especially active balancer ones. And we have high voltage disconnect, so it's fully charged. So last night I finished up this battery and I noticed that these EVE cells from Current Connected, the terminal placement is different than the other ones. They're actually closer together. So I needed longer bus bars and instead of making my own, which I'm tired of doing at this point in my life, I just put two of them together and it works great. Now this is the first new cell pack that we have in this configuration. Previously, I was using this configuration for grade B cells so they could expand and contract without issue and without stressing these terminals so it doesn't break the attachment between the terminal and the lattice. But this configuration has worked so well that I thought, hey, why not try it with some new cells? And so far, I really do like it. I actually have friends that are copying this and it works well. I mean, you won't have a single issue here. Now, as you guys know, the case of these cells is bonded to one of the terminals and you won't have a short circuit and very little current will flow. But with a whole chain of cells like this, you could actually cause some damage if you shorted out the case of the first cell and the case of the last cell. And some people add extra material to separate the cells. So they'll put foam or some type of fiberboard between the cells so this never ever occurs. But if you configure them like this, you'll never have that problem anyways. And they can expand and contract without any stress to the terminals. It doesn't look that cool though. I understand that, but very practical. 
Now on my grade B pack, I had my BMS mounted like this temporarily, but it's really nice from a safety standpoint. It's not touching anything and it can dissipate a lot of heat without issue. So I actually copied this design for this new pack. So again, very ugly, but it works very well. I know I'll have zero issues. If something were to overheat, then so what? The first thing that would fail is the insulation on these wires, maybe this board, some, maybe these capacitors right here, but yeah, it's, it's very safe. And this battery has its own circuit breaker regardless, so it's isolated from the rest of the system. And last night I calculated I have about 91.6 kilowatt hours for all of these batteries that are connected right now. And because I added a new pack to the system, we have to do a capacity test. So today I'm gonna charge up these batteries to 100% and then change the settings on the Victron shunt and then do a complete cycle down to zero. And then I'll know if this pack is actually pulling the full capacity, because I know everything else is, but yeah, if this does while well, it's connected, then we're good to go. But 91.6 kilowatt hours is quite significant. I can charge my plaid from like 10% to 100% in a single cycle. Or I could run GPU miners or run my air conditioner when it gets hot in the next couple months here. And that's pretty much it. A very easy to build battery. I mean, nowadays you just buy good cells, you slap a BMS on it, make sure there's nothing combustible around and you're done. That's it. Do a capacity test, make sure it works and you're good to go. I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.